we're now going to move on to applying, um, seeing the application of polytopes to a game. So if you consider a game in our, our usual uh, way, oh, oops. r to the m times m squared, so we got this uh, uh, two-player game, we add the, the extra restriction that we only want to consider polytopes, uh, sorry, uh, utility matrices that are strictly positive. Okay, and I'll, I'll do an example that shows that that's not restrictive. We can simply upscale um, everything. So uh, we, we define what's called a row uh, player best response polytope as the following. And we're going to use the half space definition. So we don't know the vertices yet. And in fact, that's more or less the whole point. So we see that we have m rows. So we now have a vector of size m. And now we have some inequalities, because remember, it's the half space definition. So we're cutting the space into half. And normally, we write this as a single matrix equation. And here, we're just going to write it as two matrix, matrix equations. First of all, all our elements must be greater or equal to 0. And this must be true. So this is for the row player, right? We're saying um, that our uh, our elements are the size of the rows. These are eventually going to correspond to, to strategies. But then we're saying they're all the elements uh, that are positive and that give some upper bound to the utility of the column player. This is the utility of column player. Okay, that's nothing new, that's just what we've seen. So the row player polytope has got this upper bound defined by the utility of the column player. Um, the column player best response polytope is defined very similarly. So we have Q, and now we're going to use Y, and this is a vector of size N. And we have more or less the equivalent inequalities, but I'm going to order them differently, and that ordering is important. So I'm first going to say, okay, give some upper bound to the utility of the row player. And Y is greater or equal to zero. So those are our... Um, two polytopes, and what we uh, are now going to do is consider a little example where we uh, play around with um, the matching pennies game. So if you remember the matching pennies game, we have A equals 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, and B equals minus 1, 1, 1, minus 1. Okay? Um, but remember, we said we have to only consider games where there are no negative elements. So the first thing we do is add two to all the utilities to give us that A is now three, one, one, three, and B is one, one, three, three. Okay, so um, we're gonna use this, and let me just write down the uh, utility of uh, the, the, the definition of P once again. So, so P is going to be equal to um, X belonging to R to the M such that X is greater or equal to zero and uh, X B is less than or equal to one. So our uh, best response polytope uh, P has the following inequalities. So it's got X one. Remember now M is two, right? So let me, let me just make a little note of that. M is equal to 2 in this case because we've got two rows. So x1 is uh, greater or equal to 0. x2 is greater or equal to 0. And now we have um, to multiply x by b. So we're going to multiply x by the columns of b Okay, to get the utilities. So we just have x1 plus 3x2 it's got to be less than or equal to 1. And 3x1 plus x2 is got to be less than or equal to 1. So let's uh, 
So this defines our, our polytope. And what we're going to do now is draw it, just to take a look at it, because what we are going to want to know are what are the vertices of our polytope. So if you remember, what we've seen is that you can either defend a po define a polytope based on the vertices, or you can define it based on the half spaces. And this is what we do in game theory. We start with the payoff matrices. We build the polytope. At this point, we have no idea what the vertices are. And now we're going to find out what the vertices are. OK, so um, let's just go ahead and, 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 and figure, figure that out. So you have x1 along here, x2 along here. And we know that x1's got to be greater or equal to 0. So we are getting rid of all of this. We know that x2 has got to be greater than 0. So we're getting rid of all of that. We now know that x1 plus 3x2 has got to be less than or equal to 1. OK? But we can also write this as a more uh, in a more usual format of what a line is, right? So that's just x2 is going to be less than or equal to a third minus a third of x1. OK? Um, just making sure I've got all my maths right there. Yeah, all right. So. The um, the equation is going to start off at a third, and it's going to go down um, somewhat like that. Okay, um, so everything above that line is now also to be ignored. This equation is is very uh, similar, except this is going to be x two less than or equal to one minus three x one. So that starts up around up here somewhere, and it goes uh, down. Um, and in fact, it goes down till about a third. When um, x is equal to a third, x2 is got to be equal to 0. So it goes somewhat like that. OK, should have drawn that with a bit more symmetry, but hopefully you get the idea. So the final thing to, to identify is what this point is. And that point is just going to be the intersection of, of these two lines, um, which we can we can work out relatively uh, straightforwardly as a quarter, a quarter. Okay, so uh, and I'm 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 just finding that by equating these two things to be equal. I'm just finding the intersection of these two two lines. So from this, we can just read off what our vertices are. And so the vertices of the row player best response polytope are 0, 0. That just corresponds to this. Uh, for completeness, let me, uh, let me draw that. So we're, we're only considering everything here. Um, 0, 0. 0, a third, a third, 0, and a quarter, a quarter. And of course, we could do the same thing for the column player. Um, and what we'll uh, see next is, is what we do with this.